Well, good afternoon. We're going to get started with today's broadcast of Be Healed. We're talking about how to receive healing and about healing in general. So if you need healing today, this is your day. This is the day you get healed. Jesus has provided it, and we're doing everything that the Bible says that we need to do to get it to you. And so we just want you to listen and put into practice what we will be saying, and you will be healed. Not to mention the fact that at the end of the broadcast, I will be praying for you, and you should get healed right then. So, if you have your Bible, and you should, go ahead and turn with me. I'm going to take you to about three or four scriptures, and then I'm going to give you some explanation. So, first off, this is, is, as I said, the Be Healed broadcast. Today's message, if you want to give it a title, would be God gave healing, but have you received it? God gave healing, but have you received it? Now, uh, the essence of this is very simple. God has done everything he needs to do to provide healing for you. It is his will. He wants you healed. He wants you free. And so uh, he has already sent everything that he needed to send. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm referring to in just a minute. But he's already done everything he needs to do. He's not picking and choosing. He's not saying that, uh, you know, I'm waiting for this person to get to this place spiritually and then I can heal them. I'm waiting for them to get this sin out of their life before I can heal them. That is not what God has said. That is what man has said. And that is what man has set up as God's standards. But I can show you so many numerous scriptures that completely uh, prove those ideas to be wrong. But today we're going to talk specifically about what God did to get healing to you and how you can receive it. So let's, let's go into the scriptures. Uh, first off, we're going to look at Psalm 107, Psalm 107, verse 20. Now, this verse simply says that he sent his word and healed them. So we'll just read it. It says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now, I, you know, one of the biggest uh, hindrances in getting people healed sometimes is the fact that people know just enough theology that they actually refuse to believe the word of God. I know that may sound strange, but it is a fact. So I just want you to realize that the Word of God stands on its own. And I want you to realize when God makes a statement, it's a statement. He, and now, it's always good if you can take the whole Word of God together and, and correctly divide it and, and, and know what is being said about the topic. But I want you to realize that whenever God makes a direct statement, then that direct statement is a fact, and it is truth. And so we want to look at this statement he made. It says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So notice when he sent his word, it healed them and it delivered them from their destructions. So he, God, by sending his word, has accomplished all that needs to be done. Now, stay with me and we're going to see this in just a moment. We're going to bring it all together toward the end. But I want you to look at also... In John chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse 14, and it says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now again, we're just going to take this scripture and look at it piece by piece. First off, notice, and the Word was made flesh. Now, the word word here in the original Greek is the Greek word logos. And it literally means the entire general concept, the entire um, idea, you might say, a complete idea. It's where we get our word logic. It's where we get our word many times when you see words like theology. The ology on the end of it is from this word logos. It means to study, to come to a conclusion, and it means the complete fulfillment or complete understanding of a given concept. Now, and that, now, that's a very uh, brief definition. We could go much deeper in it and, and take it piece by piece, but today's not the day for that because uh, I'm trying to get you healed and I'm trying to do it as quickly as I can. So, first off, it says, and the word, the overall concept, the overall idea, the overall message that God was trying to send to the earth was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, notice, a, a word, a spoken word, can't dwell among us. So obviously, in all 
theologians and scholars and Christians understand that when it says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, it is talking about Jesus Christ himself. And so we realize that Jesus is the Word made flesh. If you took all of God's Word, the idea that God had, the entire knowledge and concept of God, everything he was thinking about every subject, and took all of that word, took all of the Bible, as we would say, took all of that word and made it into a flesh human being, you would have Jesus. Jesus was the complete embodiment. He was the complete personification of the word of God. Now, you have to remember that because now we're going to start seeing uh, what was meant in Psalm 107. So let's look at it. It says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. And that's talking about the glory, obviously his there. It's talking about Jesus. So we know that the word was made flesh. Jesus was the word. And I should say the word was made Jesus, put it that way. And Jesus was the word in flesh and he dwelt among us. Now, let's take it step by step. Here's the first uh, scripture we're going to add to the previous scripture that we were talking about in Psalm 107. Because it says he sent his word. Well, now we know what that word is. That word was Jesus. So the word was made flesh. How did he send it to him? How did he send his word to heal? Well, he sent Jesus. And Jesus, the word, was made flesh, came to the earth. So he came to the earth from God the Father. So the Father sent the word, and the word was made flesh. Now it says that he sent his word and healed them. So by Jesus coming, to the earth as the word and then be made flesh, he healed and he delivered us from our destructions. All right, now that's, I'd say that's the first point. So remember that. Now let's go to the next one. And this is something that Jesus himself said. In uh, John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profiteth Nothing. In other words, now notice he's saying, but you have the flesh and you have the spirit. It's the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit that gives life. The flesh, you don't profit anything from the flesh. It's not saying that the flesh doesn't profit from the spirit. It's saying that you cannot, you cannot profit from the flesh or the, the flesh, the soulish aspect does not help you. It's saying that it's the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit that helps you. That's what he's talking about. So, and it says, the words, this is Jesus, remember that, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, do you get that? The words he spoke are spirit, and it's the spirit that profits, not the flesh. So he's saying, it's the spirit that profits, and the words that I speak to you, they are profiting you because they are spirit. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. And so you get life from the words that Jesus spoke. Why? Because he was the word made flesh. So the word was made flesh and he spoke out these words and this word now coming by the spirit out through Jesus brought us healing and by his coming to the earth he brought our healing and bought our healing I should also say. But we want to realize he says my words the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. What does that mean? You profit by them because It's the spirit that profits, not the flesh. So you can profit. Now, when I say profit, it doesn't mean money necessarily, especially in this connotation. It's saying that they will help you. They will benefit you. You will prosper, spirit, soul, and body based on the words that Jesus said. So if you truly want to prosper, you have to get God's words, Jesus' words, into you and live by them. If you do that, you will experience true prosperity, which again can include finances, but that is by far not only what was intended when Jesus spoke that. So let's look at the next one. The next one is this, and that's out of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. It starts by saying, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now, notice this. Now, I, I, I want to emphasize this point here. As I'm speaking to you, 
Now, if, we, if you were in my presence, I would probably lay hands upon you, take you by the hands, minister life to you, and get you healed. Since you're at a distance, I can pray, and God will still heal you no matter where you are. We had a testimony yesterday, uh, while I was preaching yesterday, a man's deaf ears were opened as he sat. He could read, apparently read lips is um, the way he actually wrote it. And as he read the, the, the lips uh, as I was preaching, then it, his ears were actually opened up, and he was no longer deaf. So that's the, that's the one thing I wanted to bring in about that. Just by him hearing, and actually at that point he wasn't hearing, but actually knowing the words that were coming forth. And you're not separated by distance by the Spirit of God. God can reach you and touch you anywhere. So you can be healed where you are, whether my hands are on you or any other way. And I'm just trying to get healing to you. But if you're there by yourself, I'm telling you how you can receive healing where you are. So let's look at this now. He says, first off, my son, attend to my words. So that tells us that it's the words of God that has uh, the importance here, right? So we've been talking about words so far. He says, incline your ear unto my sayings. Now that means, literally means to lean in and listen intently. It doesn't mean just catch it and just catch it in passing or just let it be playing uh, while you're doing your business. Now, that's, that's fine to do, but he said, you need to incline your ear on purpose and get this. Then he said, don't let them depart from your eyes. What does that mean? That means that you should be reading the Word of God. You should be listening to it, watching it on, on, on video, as we have many videos you can watch, uh, different ways. You should keep God's Word constantly circulating within your spirit, soul, and body by seeing it, hearing it in every mean saturate yourself with the Word of God. Then he says, keep them in the midst of your heart. Now, what does that mean? That means you're to ponder it, to think about it, to meditate, to dwell upon, and you just kind of talk to yourself. I know that sounds funny, and I know you've probably heard that people that talk to themselves are crazy. Well, that was a lie from the devil to keep you from meditating in the Word of God. You need to talk to yourself. Uh, honestly, sometimes that may be the best conversation you could have is some of the conversations you have with yourself. So, keep them in the midst of your heart. Then verse 22, For they, they what? The words of God are life unto those that find them. Now, notice that's what Jesus said. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And he said, now, for these words are life to everyone that finds it. Now, understand, this, that means that God isn't picking and choosing who gets it. He said, you incline your ears, you keep it in front of you, you keep it in your heart. And he said, and he said, my words, the reason you do this, now, now get this, verse 22 is saying the reason you should listen, the reason you should incline, the reason you should meditate or dwell upon and keep the words in your heart is because his words are life to everyone that finds them. So you can choose to find life in the words of God. And then he says, and finally, and health. His words are health to all their flesh. Whose flesh? The flesh of the people that find his words. So by you listening to this broadcast, by you hearing the word of God, you are finding his words and you are, life is coming to you and health is coming into your flesh as I speak. That's what's going on. His word is life. His word is spirit. And that's all I'm doing is quoting his word. That's what I want you to, to get a hold of today. I'm not teaching you healing. I'm not in, in the sense that I'm teaching you this idea or this, you know, this camp or this group. This is what this group says. This is what that group says. I am simply quoting scripture to you. And what you're getting is the pure word of God. And as it goes into you, it brings life and it brings health to all your flesh. That is what is taking place. Whether you feel it, whether you don't feel it, none of that matters. What matters is, is that it's taking place. Now, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> now, this was actually the title that we gave to this broadcast today and to this message. And it was that God gave healing, but have you received it? So now you've heard what the Word says. You've heard what the Word of God has said about healing, how God sent his word, and his word is named Jesus, and he sent his word and healed them, meaning them all. And it said that not only did he send his word and heal them, but he delivered them from their destructions, and that's Jesus. So he sent his word. 
He sent Jesus. Jesus came. He bore the stripes. And it is by his stripes that you were healed. And you were healed 2,000 years ago. And he sent his word 2,000 years ago. His word was whipped and beaten on that whipping post. And at that point, bought your healing. Then his word was crucified. Then his word was buried and resurrected and went back to him, having accomplished what he came to do. So the, the word of God even says that God's word does not go out and return to him void, but actually it cannot return to him until it accomplishes what it was sent to do. Jesus accomplished what he was sent to do. He sent his word and healed them. Your healing is a fact. It's a truth. There's no doubt about it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's already done. It's already put to your account. And so now, let's take the next step. You say, well, if that's true, how come I'm not walking in? How come I don't have it? Well, he may have given it, but have you received it? So right now, in the next few minutes, we're going to teach you how to receive it so you can put a time stamp on it, literally, and say, this is when I received it. And then you watch his word come alive in your life and bring health to your flesh. So let's look at it. You can go with me. <clears throat> a verse well known. <laughs> uh, it's Mark 11, cha uh, chapter 11, verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Now I could go uh, a lot further in here, but I don't have time today, so we're just going to hit the high points here. Uh, I'll give you enough to get healed, that's for sure. You can get healed on one verse. It doesn't take a whole lot. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to know everything. You can get healed on one verse. So, Mark eleven twenty two starts by saying, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Now, I've had people say when the original Greek it says, Have the faith of God or have faith of God. Bottom line, it all comes back to the same thing. Your faith has to be in God. Your faith cannot be in yourself. It can't be in your faith. Listen, you don't need faith in your faith. What you need is faith in God, that God is a God of his word and keeps his word. So <clears throat> Jesus said, have faith in God for verily, absolutely, without a doubt, I say unto you. Now, what did he say? I say unto you. What does that mean? My words are spirit and, and they are life. That's what he said. So now he's saying, I'm saying to you, I'm giving you spirit. I'm giving you life. If you'll get this, he says that whosoever, now that's me, that's you, that's anybody else, whosoever means anybody. Or as T.L. Osborne always said, who's, <clears throat> yeah, he always used to um, tell people <clears throat> that whosoever means yousoever. And I've, that's always stuck with me because it is absolutely true. So you're a whosoever. That whosoever shall say, not think, not you know, desire, but say, to speak, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, any mountain, any mountain, any problem, any disease, anything that you must overcome, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, and notice, it's, you're not saying to God, you are speaking to the mountain, you're speaking to the disease, to the illness, to the pain, you're, whatever it is, you're speaking to it, and you're not asking it to move. You are commanding it to move. Because notice the next part. He said, if you speak to this mountain, you say to this mountain, be thou removed. That's a command. He didn't say beg it, and he didn't say beg God to do it. He said, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, that's the first step. So you must fill yourself with the Word of God, as we've been doing here, and it doesn't take years and years. You can Everything you need to get healed, if this is your first time to even watch a broadcast or first time to even hear about healing, what you're hearing right now is enough to get you healed. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when you hear the Word of God, there is faith available right then for you to act upon it and bring it to pass in your life. It doesn't take 10 years of confessing the Scriptures. Now, you can do that, but it doesn't require that. You, the minute you hear something, you can act upon it because faith comes with the Word itself. Now, again, we'll go into all these principles later on, but I want you to realize the next part. 
Now, so the first thing is you need to say to this thing, if maybe you have cancer, maybe you have leukemia, maybe you have, uh, you know, any other disease that's, uh, that has a name, and you can speak to that thing and say, cancer, I'm telling you, you go now. And just command it to go. It is that simple. Literally that simple. You say, well, that's, that's too simple. I, I don't understand. Well, that's even a better part. That's the beauty of this. You don't have to understand how it works. You just have to know that it works and then put it into action. So he says, <clears throat> after that, now you know now to speak to your problem and command it to go. Tell it what you want it to do. Leave my body. Be gone. Never return. Any of these statements work. Then he says in verse 24, and this is the key. Therefore, in other words, because that you will have what you say, that if you speak, it will happen. Because of that, therefore, Jesus says, I say unto you, what things, now notice things, what things soever you desire. We would say it this way. What, what thing, well, <clears throat> whatever you would desire, a thing, anything that you would desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now notice, so here he's talking, one minute, he says, even when you pray, you should pray the same way you speak. And he said, because you will have what you say, then you should pray accordingly. And he says, when you pray, believe right then that you receive it. And immediately right then, now if you receive it, you have to count it as done and because you now have it. So if you're praying for healing, then you would actually pray and believe that you receive right now and that you are healed according to the Word of God and you believe it right now. Then notice what it says. And when you do that, you believe that you receive them. And then it says, and you shall have them. So it, it proves that Mark eleven twenty four 24 is saying they're not going to instantly manifest, but you shall have them. Now they can manifest very quickly, but you shall have them. So you believe you have them, you believe you received them, and you will get them is the way we would say it. So, but you have to believe that you have received. Now, once you believe that you have received it, then you can never say, I don't have it. Be or otherwise, you have not believed that you received it. So, because once you believe that you have it, you can't say you don't have it. You say, well, I don't see it. Well, you can say that. You can say, listen, I believe I got it. And I've got it. Now, but I don't see it. But I've got it. You see, that's, that's perfectly legal, biblically, to say. But I want you to realize that at some point you have to time stamp when you received your healing. Not when you got it. You understand what I mean? Not when you received. You have to really be careful of the words here. But I want you to get this. You have to decide at this point, I believe that I received. Now I shall have it. Well, when is that? Well, it's coming. It's on its way. It's just as if you made a phone call and placed an order online or, or called some company and placed an order. And they took your credit card information and they said, all right, well, here's your, your confirmation code and all this. And uh, all right, well, we've got your order and uh, we'll, we'll ship it out today. Well, then you call somebody and say, guess what, man, I just bought this thing. Well, when you bought it, it means you got it. See, but the minute you bought it, you got it, but you haven't received it in the sense that, it, that you have it in front of you. And they say, well, where is it at? Oh, well, it's on its way. Well, I thought you said you had it. Well, I did. I, it's paid for and it's on its way. It, and so it'll be here. You see, so it's not telling you to ignore the fact that there are symptoms in your body. It's just telling you to recognize the fact that this was already paid for and done by Jesus. God sent his word and healed them and, de and delivered them from their destructions. Jesus was the word made flesh. He came, he bore the stripes, and by his stripes you were healed. So believe it and receive it and you shall have it. Right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and pray for you because we have to finish up today. But I want to go ahead and, and minister to you right now. And I want you to think about this. And we're going to be talking about uh, each aspect of this as we go along. But I want you to understand that once you decide that you have believed that you have received, then you need to start talking like you've received. And you need to start saying what the Bible says. The Bible never says that you are sick. It, it, the Bible says you are healed. And so, now, understand, just because you say, well, I believe by his stripes I'm healed, that doesn't mean that you're lying and saying that you don't feel bad. You can feel bad and yet still believe the Word of God, right? So the idea is, matter of fact, honestly, until you say that by his stripes you were healed while you feel bad, I wouldn't even be sure that you actually believe it. 
Because at some point, you have to make a choice to believe what the Word says over what your body says. And whenever you make that stand, then the, your body will start to line up with the Word. You have to show your body that the Word of God is more important and more solid and that you believe it more than you believe what your body is telling you. Now, I could give you so many examples uh, of this very principle but I want you today to receive healing, so make that decision. Just say this with me from wherever you are right now. Just say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, you said that by His stripes I was healed, and I believe your word. So right now, I believe that I receive my healing, and by His stripes I'm healed. I believe I receive it, and I shall have it. Heavenly Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Now, if you said that, and you've had sickness in your body or any kind of pain, and you said that with me, and you believe that right now we set this time for you to receive your healing, then from this point on, you're saying to anybody or anybody else, I believe I'm healed. It's that simple. You don't have to go in, well, what, how do you feel? Well, no, that's a whole different thing. Well, and I, I can tell you, I feel terrible, but I believe I'm healed. See, I know there's all kinds of uh, different teachings on this, but I'm just telling you, God never tells you to lie. He doesn't say to tell you, well, I feel wonderful, even whenever you feel bad, all right? He, he's telling you, now, you can say you believe that you're healed, and yet you feel horrible. All right? Now, I wouldn't advise you to go around saying you feel horrible because it just reinforces that and you're snared by your lips. So you, you shouldn't just go around saying it. But what I'm trying to get across is by you saying that, you're not necessarily saying, I don't believe the Word of God. But I'm telling you, if someone asks you how you feel, you can be truthful. But at the same time, you have to understand how you feel does not dictate the Word of God. The Word of God says you're healed and that's what you need to say. That's what you need to be telling people. And so just let people know if they ask you about it, say, you know what, it's taken care of. I'm healed. Oh, really? What? Well, I believed I received two days ago. Well, what's changed? Well, a lot. I just don't see it or feel it at this point, but a lot's changed. Why? Because the Word of God is true. Amen? That's the way that you can receive your healing where you are. And even now that you've prayed and believed, you should just begin thanking God and just letting Him know that you appreciate the fact that He sent His Word and healed you, that His Word is true to you. So, we're going to finish this broadcast today. We thank you for, for watching. Listen, remember, if you have questions or, um, well, even specific prayer requests, you can write them in to us. We'll be glad to answer your questions. We'll be glad to pray for you. Uh, even prayer clause, you can request prayer clause. So just contact us here at JGLM. We'll be glad to help you any way possible. So until uh, next week, God bless you. And just send in your testimonies. If you were healed today, let us know. Uh, we've already got some testimonies, but we want to hear from you. So God bless you. We'll see you next week.